Good morning, and I wanted to share some thoughts with you, uh, not only because of prepping, but uh, our diet has so many extra calories in it at, um, we're either not aware of or we are aware but don't know what to do about it and not eat. Um, so this morning I was asked to make pancakes, and as usual we put butter on them. We buy syrup that's more calories, and we use the light, but... Uh, it's still extra calories, and then usually a yogurt, and this little cup of yogurt, it's 140 calories, and that's not much, and the syrup's not much, and the pancakes, but after you add it up, it starts getting over what an average breakfast should be for a, a lady or a, a person, a male that's uh, not doing a lot of work, so um, we thought, why not take the 140 calorie yogurt, which is uh, got some good flavor, and then we buy plain, which is only 80 calories. That's about as low as you can get for yogurt. And then we mix the two together. We put a whole cup of that, and then we take this yogurt and we fill that up again. And we mix it in here. Sometimes I put a little more of the plain in uh, than with that, so that even the calorie count's lower. And I know some will argue, well, if this is 140 calories and you add 80, you're, that's 220. But what we did is cut it in half, which is about 110 because half of this yogurt will go on their pancakes and half will go on my pancakes. And what I usually do <clears throat> is I open the pancake up and put two good sized scoops on there. And sometimes we make a big one and fold it over and then you can put some fruit in there uh, but if you're using fruit that's in a can or something with syrup, rinse it off. Um, be aware of your calories. Uh, if you're adding bananas in there, that looks nice and it tastes great, but bananas are high in calories. Very high. But uh, for this, we're just going to show you for the yogurt, and I stacked them like that. And if you want to do a presentation, you could do that and put a little strawberry on the top, and you're ready to go. So we eliminated some of the yogurt calories, and we eliminated the syrup. And this is light syrup, so it's 100 calories per serving, and that's about a quarter cup. So um, regular syrup is at least twice as much. So, taking this out of the equation, and you know what, after a while, after a couple times of doing it, eating less sugar, you actually can taste the sweetness in the food and the flavor. So, uh, that might help you be able to still have pancakes and not overdo it. Well, I'm going to take it out. Uh, sorry about that. Let me set the camera down and got the lens all fuzzy. Anyways, sat down and have a nice breakfast. Warm and uh, yogurt lovers, this is fantastic. Um, if you're just getting used to eating yogurt, uh, it's good for your insides to give you a healthy area that you can absorb your food better, like you're supposed to. But all the modern things we have kind of take that apart, especially antibiotics. 
but uh, I'm going to take this. Mm. And that's pretty good. But we got rain yesterday. Even though it's very sunny out now. And usually it goes from 65, 68 degrees to uh, 81. But uh, when it rains, like it did last night, we collect water in buckets for our garden. And uh, the rain collects. catch it in the bucket below and that way it helps to have a little extra backup water and we uh, keep it in jugs or we can put a hole in the jug and use it to slowly feed the plant so it doesn't all go in at once or we have a, a rain barrel and we take our buckets and we dump it in the rain barrel Well, taking a walk after breakfast and just taking a look at what's in the garden. And we got a volunteer here growing in our strawberry bucket and I can clean that up and put new compost so the strawberries are doing better. Uh, but I chose to leave this here and maybe I'll transplant it into the garden somewhere else. And we got raspberries and uh, these seem to have a nice smell to it. The uh, comfrey is almost done blooming and then I can collect seeds from it. And this one's gotten over three to four feet in length, some of it. So it's quite happy. The uh, chard is going to go to seed. And the tomatoes are starting to get a little color back. This one kind of turned yellow, so it probably will need some fertilizer. Because the heavy sudden rains really leach out soil, especially in planter buckets. But uh, I don't put holes in the bottom anymore, as I did in one of my other videos you can watch. I put the hole down near the side. Let's see. There it is. About an inch, sometimes two inches up, depending on what I'm doing. Um, that way, when it rains heavy, the extra water sits in the bottom and keeps feeding my plant. Instead of uh, the hole in the bottom, very bottom, drains all the nutrients out with the extra water, and then it dries up when the sun comes back out. And then all of a sudden, your beautiful tomatoes look like they're going backwards. So... Uh, Putting a couple of holes on the side edges instead of the bottom is definitely a good thing. And with deep soil, uh, you can put milk cartons or bottles in the bottom to bring up the level so that the water basin doesn't have to be full of dirt. And then put your dirt on top of it. And if the plant needs it, it'll send its roots down into the water reservoir and the rest of the plant stays nice and dry and the plants prefer it that way it's more like nature so and our raspberries are starting to do good we have some dill i just threw the seeds in the bucket didn't have to make a special bed and i can still use this bed for something else and uh, and amongst the uh, grass is Shasta Daisy, and I took cuttings that took their rooting. You look down there, you can see one of the milk jugs has uncovered the dirt, but uh, it's not affecting the plants, but normally we keep them covered. If you want to leave it so that uh, you can add water from the bottom, you could do that, but I usually don't. <laughs> I add it right on the top. Either way, you know, experiment, see what works for you. Different plants have different needs too. So, I found out what the uh, tree in my compost bag is, bark mulch. It's a uh, ornamental crab apple. And the crab apples are 
Let's see. Very tiny. Because since it's in a bag of, of uh, bark chips, it's not getting as much nutrients as it would otherwise. So this is at the stage where I could prune it nice and shape it, take off some of these bottom branches. And people plant these in the yards for ornamental because the little apples are too hard to eat. Um, you can see a comparison. There's my pinky. But if we get this plant in the ground, each one of those little apples will be a half an inch in diameter and they get bright red in the fall. So it makes nice color. And they're pretty disease resistant. So this volunteer grew in my mulch bag and I'm going to prune it up and give it a home. I guess uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, hope your garden's doing well too. There's some seed pods on the uh, chart. Seeds instead of paying three dollars, two, three dollars for about 20 seeds. Here we got hundreds. Let me know what you're doing with your garden.